this will be another bridge, yet another bridge really, in trying to build something more stable, and I would say also something more lasting for the region. Jews are going to move to the UAE, coming from Europe, escaping anti-Semitism. Yeah. If somebody would have told you that, you know, a year, two years ago, I mean, it's, it's it pretty amazing. The, it boggles the mind. Just yesterday, as my plane was landing, there were two planes that were landing in Marrakesh, the first two direct flights uh, that came from Israel here. And I know that the flights from here going to Israel and Royal Air Morocco are going to begin shortly. Having this uh, direct connection it was really one of our priority and we've been working hard to make it uh, happen quickly. It's about easing the mobility of people who are willing to visit both sides. There are a lot of people excited to learn more about each other and to work together because this is a relationship that uh, is built with conviction. We'll show it on the field, public and private sector and normal people too. I'm in charge of tourism for Jerusalem. Many Muslims in the Gulf really have on their bucket list to come and pray on the Temple Mount, Haram al-Sharif, and we are today laying the infrastructure for the future Muslim tourism, Muslim pilgrims that we've never really seen in great numbers in Jerusalem. Jerusalem means Ir Shalem, city of peace. It's been anything but a city of peace for almost this entire 3,000 year history. Uh, now it's, it's, it's as good as it's ever been, I mean, in terms of the openness and tolerance for multiple religions. I think peace is the most difficult path to pursue. And it is difficult to convince those who have already set minds or have vested interests. The Abraham Accords are technically normalization agreements. But the parties involved also call them peace agreements because of the goals and the spirit behind them. A spirit that would hopefully move the parties to dialogue and cooperation in times of regional conflict. Although it was a lesson that none of us wished to learn this quickly, already in 2021 we found out whether the accords would hold in the heat of war between Israel and Hamas. We knew that there would be stresses on the accords because this is a very dynamic region. There's still a lot of volatility. There's still a lot of extremism. And the first test came along last month, right? There's a war between Hamas and Israel. What started as a flashpoint over threatened evictions of Palestinian families and clashes at the Al-Aqsa Mosque is escalating towards an all-out war. Sirens ringing out, warning Israelis to take cover. The Iron Dome intercepting as many incoming projectiles as possible. The punishing retaliation of an air assault on Gaza targets by Israeli forces, pushing the casualty count higher with each cycle. This was the perfect opportunity for them to say, let's blow up the Accords, the Abraham Accords, while we can, and shake it. Riots in the streets, Arab violence visited upon Jews, as well as Jewish violence visited upon Arabs inside Israel. Israel said Hamas fired more than 4,000 rockets at Israel in recent days. I have a four-year-old and uh, almost four-month-old. Cradling my, uh, my baby, my four-month-old, um, in a makeshift shelter after rockets were fired at us, uh, fired at Israel and fired on Tel Aviv at that point um, by the Hamas terrorists, like 3 a.m. in the morning. So many families across Israel, some like six million, I think, that's two thirds of the country that uh, ended up being not only in the firing range of the rockets, but forced to flee for shelter. And we live in an apartment building, so we didn't have enough time to actually make it to the shelter, which was downstairs, so we had to, do with a makeshift uh, protection area, which was the stairway. You know, at three o'clock in the morning, you hear the siren, your children are asleep. You know, your first priority, your first, your only thought is, I have to get my family, I have to get my children. No parent, no father, no, no, no mother, no one should be forced to do that.
Within moments of me running to shelter, the first people to ask me, are you okay, were my friends from the Emirates and from Bahrain. It was, I, I can't begin to describe how meaningful, how impactful and how important that was. They reached out before some of my other friends. I have so many Israeli friends, and at the same time, so many Palestinian friends, and I had to call each and every one of them. Are you guys okay? Are you fine? We are with you, you know, uh, sending you all the prayers, all the support, whatever you need. I'm not being judgmental. I'm not following whatever I see in the media, because the, they would show you whatever they want you to see. Yeah. You know, not, not the full picture, you know, just parts of the picture. Because of the Abraham Accords, they know what is happening here. They're not getting their information now from the mainstream media. They have direct access to us, as we do to them now. Now we are creating the perception ourselves, we're learning ourselves, we're taking that responsibility. My heart goes to, to the people from Israel and Palestine. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm talking about the people, you know, because people suffer. I saw uh, Israel and the UAE and the other Abraham Accord partners. Um, to the extent they disagreed, they did so respectfully. Uh, to the extent that there were issues, they were handled uh, by friends. And, uh, and we're now on the other side of that conflict. And um, I'm seeing uh, the, the first test of the Abraham Accords, the first real test, uh, we all passed. With flying colors, yeah. with flying colors, Ambassador. I would say what many people don't know uh, is that during those difficult 11 days of fighting, there was constant communication between our Foreign Minister, Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed, and the Israeli Foreign Minister, Gabi Ashkenazi. Mm -hmm. And the UAE played an important role in reaching out and in urging a quick ceasefire and in urging support for the Egyptian initiative. Normally there would have been this blow up Security Council meeting with everyone condemning Israel. I can't even believe in what I faced at the UN that you didn't have this massive blow up in press conferences and votes and people being angry. And I always say that the two most countries that have been helpful with, to the Palestinians uh, have been Egypt and Jordan, and both of them have relations with Israel. The Abrahamic Accords allowed us to also be a helping hand, a helping voice uh, to the Israelis. Israel has agreed to a mutual unconditional ceasefire to begin in less than two hours. I extend my sincere gratitude to President al-Sisi and the senior Egyptian officials who played such a critical role in this diplomacy. I also appreciate the contributions of other parties in the region who have been engaged in working toward the end of hostilities. I would like to think that in a small way we played a role in that Israeli uh, decision. I, th I think you played a, a large role, and, and I'll tell you why from you know, my perspective. Israel often has felt isolated over its history. It's the only Jewish state in the entire world, surrounded by uh, 20 or so uh, Arab countries. Relations have mostly not been good over the last uh, 70 years since it was founded. When Israel feels isolated, naturally, it causes itself to close ranks and to think narrowly about its own issues. With the Abraham Accords, uh, that isolation has, has, has modulated, it's lifted a certain amount. And as it's lifted, it's kind of opened up, I think, Israeli society to think more about the bigger picture and to feel less isolated and less threatened. The less threatened it feels, the more open it is, I think, to finding you know, less violent means of, of resolution. And I think so, I think it was a major role that you played. 
During the conflict in Gaza, I was hosted in the houses of local Emiratis, talking to young people. And one thing kept coming back, and that was, you know, for the first time we have a chance to hear the other side. And another sentence was, where were we in the last 72 years? Music to our ears, really. Hey, I'm Mati Shoshani, and thank you for watching the TBN Israel YouTube channel. We hope this video gave you greater understanding of Israel and her people. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. We'd love to hear from you, so be sure to share what you've learned and ask your questions and comments below. And invite your friends to join the conversation.